Yo, 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 we're back at the Mecca Poker House Dallas, and me and Frank are playing a little one, two, five, private game called Ducks Game. It's a notorious game here. Yeah, we were lucky enough to get invited. They picked the most action players at Poker House Dallas, and then they invited us. So let's get started. Let's get into the action now. I really just want to gamble. This is such a. <laughs> one, two, five. I don't care. Yeah, I don't care. That was your oh. first hand? Yeah. Kings? It's open for crying 30, 30, 30, 1,000. He called for the 1,000. What? Oh, what is man. Ace, Ace, queen, 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 high? Ace, queen, high. Yeah, this is an 8 all in the check. What the like, hell? No, no, 11 now. We're 11 all in. Oh. First hand is against Mr. Regis. He limps the cutoff for 5. We're in the small blind, but let's call it the mini blind because we got two players left with that extra blind in there. I raised to 30, and Mr. Regis is the only caller. We're out of position, which sucks, to a flop, which comes queen, 9-8. We check it to start and he checks it back. The turn is the five of hearts. Let's see what Regis is going to do. We check and oh, he bets. We've got a pair and a draw. We call 60 and the river pairs the board. It's a nine. We check and Regis bets 150. He's repping a strong queen or better with almost a pot sized bet. And he would have bet the flop if he had one of those hands. So I make the call. He has to have a nine, right? Or nothing. He flips over, king eight offsuit. He wins, and you all will be very familiar with Mr. Regis by the end of this video. A lot more hands to come. Stay tuned. Two says seven days in the good hand. <laughs> We're on the button with king nine of spades. Mr. Regis calls five two to our right in the hijack and action Scott to my right calls five as well. I raised to 30 with about as much fold equity as Patrick Antonius has hair. Big blind, Mr. Regis and Scott all make the call. Hey guys, it's Rosie here. Sorry I missed this one. I'm so jealous. It's a good game, but I'll be back in next week's vlog. I'm just here to announce our comment giveaway winner. Shout out to this guy. 10 bucks is coming your way and 10 bucks is coming to one of you guys this week. Thank you guys so much for the support. Flop comes ace, six, queen with two spades. Checks to me, I bet 50 bucks and the big blind gets out of the way before Mr. Regis in the hijack raises to 200. Cut off folds. After Scott folds, we got a decision on our hand. I don't think Mr. Regis ever is going to fold after raising, so he's not the person who's going to be bluffing. That means we're calling. We make the call and the big blind folds. The turn comes the seven of spades, the nuts. Mr. Regis slows down. Now he checks, probably scared of that spade, so I bet a smaller sizing. I go 200 and Mr. Regis doesn't take too long before making the call. The river comes another spade, the eight of spades. I don't know if that's good or bad. Mr. Regis checks for a last time. We're going to hope it's good. I jam all in for 500, and he makes the call with ace, queen, having the queen of space. He's got to call that river, and we make all of our money back the first hand. And we got a strong start to the session. Plenty more action to come. First hand for us in this juicy 1-2-5 private game. We wake up with a bang. Pocket kings. Hijack opens at the 15. I'm obviously going for the raise on the button. I make it 60. It folds around to the $5 blind, and that's our buddy Daryl. He makes a call, and so does the hijack. So we're three ways to a flop, and it's a pretty interesting one. It comes queen, jack, 10 with two hearts and a diamond. Over pair, open-ended straight draw, pretty solid flop all around, and it checks to me. On this type of board with our specific hand, I think checking and betting can kind of be a mix here. I decided to play this one a bit more cautiously and check because Daryl in the $5 blind, he's going to have a lot of big pocket pairs and some suited Broadway cards that connect and actually outflop us on this board. So I check it back and the turn is an offsuit seven. And as suspected, Daryl must have connected because he bombs the turn for $180. The hijack quickly gets out of the way and it's on to us. Like I said before, this is a brutal spot. We double block king queen and ace queen's a possibility of a hand that Daryl could have, but I'm just getting the sense here that I'm really beat. I don't think Daryl's bluffing here. This board should heavily favor me over him. And so I know you guys might think I'm crazy. I make the fold. Not only do we not put a single chip into the pot after the flop, we end up folding an over pair on this board to a single bet. And what do you know, Daryl flashes us his hand. He shows he had the goods with pocket tens. Glad we got away from this one for the minimum and we are avoiding coolers, let's go. So Mr. JL, what do you gotta say about this hand? It's important to realize that most players who straddle came to gamble. So when the flop comes, queen jack 10, and they checked you, I would feel pretty confident putting in a value bet. And if you get raised, just don't fold. You have an overpair and an open into straight draw. It's a good hand. On the turn, when the straddle bets 180, they could be betting with a lot of worse hands, like ace queen, king queen, ace jack, queen nine, all sorts of hands like that may feel inclined to bet. Once the hijack folds, 
I see no reason to not call. You instead folded though, and I think you played this hand like a net. Ouch, Mr. Little, calling me a nit, that hurts my feelings a little bit. You know, maybe I gotta brush up on my cash game skills a bit. And what better way to do so than utilizing PokerCoaching.com's Cash Game Challenge. Us at Next Gen Poker have teamed up with PokerCoaching.com to offer our fans a limited offer for only $29. You get the entire Cash Game Challenge course. That's gonna include a ton of cash game content that's gonna help improve your game and help you grow from the low stakes all the way up to the nosebleeds. Check it out for only $29. What a steal for all this content the link will be in our description box below we look down at ace king of clubs on the button mr regis like he does every hand calls five in the low jack dj scott raises to 30 in the hijack and it's my turn to put in a pretty hefty raise i make it 125 to go and that does not scare off mr regis he makes the call he goes five to 125 and scott also makes the call and off to a flop which comes queen nine six checks to me there's no clubs out there i am just checking this one back the turn is a 10 giving us a gut shot now mr regis leads out for 220 Five. Scott basically snap calls and it's on us. We have two overs which might not be clean out and a gut shot straight draw to the nuts. Mr. Regis could have anything, but we just make the fold. We do get to see what they have. Mr. Regis shows a cheeky value bet with King-10 offsuit and Scott snaps him with King-Queen offsuit. Can I get a king high board against these guys one time, poker gods? Next hand, we have 10 at nine of spades in the cutoff. Mr. Regis calls an early position. Daryl to my right calls 10 as well, and I consider just limping behind here, but I decide to go for a raise, isolate these two players, trying to get in position with the aggression, make it $50 to go, and they both make the call. The flop comes queen, nine, eight, so we flop middle pair here, we got one spade on board, checks to me, I'm happy to check this one back, maybe hit our straight, maybe hit trips, turn is the eight of diamonds, not a good card for us, uh, another gun too, Mr. Regis leads for 40. Daryl calls 40, and of course, Mr. Regis, we're never going to fold to his one single bet. We make the call, and the river is the seven of diamonds. So, Mr. Regis slows down in checks, and now Daryl takes the aggression and bets $120. When it's on me, um, I don't think that this is actually smart thinking, but usually I'm putting Daryl on a weak queen here, um, and I make the fold, but... I'm not really sure about this decision when he shows me the six of diamonds and then lets it go. Nice hand, Daryl. Been a pretty uneventful session for me so far until we looked on an ace nine offsuit in the cutoff. Like I said, I haven't gotten to play many hands yet, so I want to open this one up. I make it $20. The button calls and the small blind calls as well as the $5 blind. So we're four ways to a flop and we instantly get rewarded for our loose open. It comes nine nine deuce rainbow. Beautiful flop. It checks over to me. And I decided to start by playing this one tricky and checking this one as well. Button checks too, four ways still to a turn card and it's an offsuit king. Checks to me again, I bet small for $25, folds around to the $5 blind and he decides to make the call. River is a 10, shouldn't change much and interestingly enough, this player leads for $100. Now the question is whether we should call or raise. Because we played our hand so passively, I think we just have to go for some value here. At this point, we're targeting any weaker nine as well as a king. I raise it up to 250 and it seems like this guy was bluffing because he folds almost right away. Anyways, happy to be scooping in a pot. Always nice to begin chipping up. Let's see if we can get on a run now. In my next hand, we look down at pocket tens. We're playing one, two, five, 10, 20. Oh yeah. And Daryl to my right raises to $160 to get us started. And only an 8X raise. We started 1200 effective, so kind of a tough spot. I don't want to just fold my pocket tens yet. Uh, pocket nines, pocket eights, I'm kind of fine dumping, but hopefully we're ahead right now. I make the call and the rest of the players get out of the way. Flop comes king, nine, four, all clubs. We do the ten of clubs and Dale puts out a almost pot sized bet of $300. Wow, tough spot for us. He's repping ace king, pairs better than ours. I know we got that club. We don't even know if that club on the turn would make us the best hand. So for now, we let it go. And Daryl, he's a nice guy. He shows after letting the board run out, pocket jacks with no club. Nice hand, Daryl. Maybe I should just fold it preflop. How about we follow those tens up with pocket queens, the ladies. Daryl limps to my right. I raised to 25 and the boy from the live stream. You guys might recognize him. He three bets me to $75. Folds back to me. I think you could call or raise here against an aggressive player like the boy. We're going to go for a four bet. I make it $225 to go and the boy makes the call. So we're going out of position, heads up to a flop, which comes queen 10, three. We flop the nuts and I'm going to put out a small continuation bet for $180 and 
Thankfully, he makes the call. Heading off to the turn, which is a three of diamonds, $900 in the middle already. And now, I slow down and go for a check. The reason I do this is because we have the super nuts and I want him to get out of line and start betting as a bluff. But he doesn't bite, he checks it back. And the river is the ace of diamonds. Now, I really try to think about what he can call me with, what I can allow him to bluff with. There was an obvious flush draw on the flop that if he had it, he might feel compelled to try to bluff in the river. If he has an ace, he might just jam for value himself. So, I check, and a boy, he jams, $600, we snap call, of course, and we win a huge hand, and I think later that he did tell me he had an ace, so good check on the river, I think we would've got paid either way. This hand, we're in the small blind and look down at ace-10 offsuit, there's two limps, and the hijack, who is a pretty loose player, he's been given a lot of action at this table, he bumps it up to $25. The button calls, and it's on to me. This raise seems relatively weak considering there's two limps for $5. I would have expected him to go a bit bigger with some strong hands, so I decided to throw in a squeeze here. I make it 150, putting the pressure on. The limpers fold, and the hijack player, what do I know? He sticks around and makes a call for 150, and the button gets out of the way. So we're heads up out of position to a flop of King Queen 10 Rainbow. We've got bottom pair, a gut shot, and an overcard. This board heavily favors me, and so although we don't have the strongest hand right now, I think a small bet makes a lot of sense, so I bet out $90 and immediately get punished when the hijack raises me to $325. Annoying spot, we don't have a strong enough hand to call here and I don't really see any reason in turning our hand into a bluff and going all in. I just let it go, make a side fold and he shows us that he got us, he had pocket fives. I'm not really sure but some reason decided to turn his fives into a bluff. And look at that, he got us to fold a 10, so props to this guy. So next time when we have a good hand, I guess we'll stack him, so we'll just have to wait until that comes. In the next hand, we look down at ace eight of diamonds in the low jack. Daryl to our right raises it to $20. We make the flat call, and the big blind Nathan puts in a squeeze to $85. Daryl gets out of the way, we're heads up, we're in position. I know it's not too strong to call and then call again, but that's what we're gonna do. We make the call, and the flop comes ace king eight. We are rewarded. Nathan puts out a seabed of $55, and I just make the call here on a board that he's gonna have the best hand a lot of the time. The turn is the jack of spades, and now now he slows down. I want to put out another bet for value, hopefully he's got a hand that can call me, I make it half pot, 160 to go, and Nathan gets out of the way, we take it down. Here we go. I have ace-king offsuit in the mandatory $5 straddle, there's also a $10 blind bet to my left. This hand starts with Nathan in the cutoff raising to 30, Mr. Regis calls on the button, and DJ Scott in the small blind raises to 150. Ace-king offsuit is like the hardest hand to play. The cutoff has an uncapped range, Mr. Regis is stickier than Robbie with jack-4, and Scott also has never folded to a raised preflop. Yeah, 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 Frankie, quit all that nonsense because you know, sure as hell, you're not folding in this game. I put in a cold 4-bet to $400, and you just have to watch what happens next. Thanks. Thanks. I have an open play over here. Is that what you want? Did you see that? Did you actually just see what just happened? <laughs> you see this is called? And Scott's all in too? Yeah, Scott show up too. Alright. I'm not folding. I can... <laughs> you better not be slow I rolling there, think... kid. I don't have a pair that helped you. <laughs> can we swap for the camera, Mr. Regis? Can we swap for the camera? Oh boy! <laughs> good luck, Mr. Regis. Good luck, Mr. Regis. No, I am. I'm one. You know. Holy shit! Look at that. This is like this is like this is like this is like including him. No. I don't know, once or twice. I don't care. I just twice. Mr. Regis says once. What he says once. He says run it once. Twice. Twice. Oh, never mind. I thought he said once. All three after. Was that? Oh my! And the deuce in the window. What the flush draw? Flush draw. What's up? Oh my gosh. Oh, Get him on the second one. He wins. He's the first one. He's gonna scoop. Straight draw. <laughs> scoop with seven dudes. That's the seven. He has seven. Oh! He scoops. He actually scoops. Four has a deuces. Well, second four has a seven. But he scoops. Ace King. 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 Oh my gosh. 
Wow. Oh, nice. Nice. It's about better. That's a vlog, God worthy level. Wow. Thank you, everyone. Are you good? Regis. Oh, my. Fuck. Well, guys, you saw it. We made a whopping $15. In for 2K, out for 20,015. Bang. 20,000? I meant 2,000. Damn it. <laughs> Not too of an exciting session for me, in for 2,000, out for 1740.